Hey guys, it's Luna. So if you've been on social media for the past week, you've probably heard about all of the events happening in Southern California, mainly Thousand Oaks, Malibu, Westlake Village, Calabasas, Aurora Hills. As a resident of the area, I just thought I would give you a little outline, story time summary of what's going on here and I've gotten a lot of you guys DMing me if I'm okay, if the area is okay now, what's going on, what's happening. So basically, let's start from the beginning. So almost a week ago on Wednesday, November 7th, there was a shooting about 10 minutes away from me at the Borderline Bar and Grill in Thousand Oaks. This is the closest shooting that has ever been near me and near my area, and it is devastating. One of my closest family friends who practically raised me, one of my second big sisters, works there and works there every night and I had lunch with her about three days before it happened and I woke up thinking she was dead. My heart was broken. I was shaking. I've never felt this way before. It was the closest thing to home that has ever happened. Thousand Oaks is rated number three of the safest cities in the world and I just, I'm speechless as to how something like this could happen near me, but the truth is it could happen anywhere until we have gun reform, mental health awareness, and the right counsel to take care of this situation. It's never gonna stop and it's ridiculous. It just keeps getting closer and closer and closer to home and my heart literally hurts so bad for families that were affected by this. It makes me scared to go anywhere. I had to go to school the next day. I was terrified, there's police everywhere. The shooter posted to Instagram while he was shooting and said something around the lines of you guys never do anything after these types of things, all you do is thoughts and prayers, and you know what? It's true. The guy was insane even before he went to war. Now he struggled with PTSD and that's another issue. We don't take care of our veterans, we don't take care of the military when they come home and it's a real issue and we need to do something about it and I hope that you guys are on the same page with me and just can't really comprehend that this happened near me. 12 innocent people lost their lives that day, including a sergeant police officer who ran in there, didn't return home to his family the next day. So I woke up that Thursday and I've truly never been the same since. After that all happened, I went to school like normal. I went to dance. And I came home and I saw in my little group chat that a fire is breaking out in Thousand Oaks. So I'm watching the news and the fire is so bad. It's really, really bad and I'm my heart is breaking even more because they just dealt with the shooting the night before. And I'm watching the news and then all of a sudden it spreads to Oak Park, which I was supposed to go to that night. And in all of this, I was home alone. My sister was out of town and same with my mom. She was out of town, so I was alone in my apartment and kind of freaking out, didn't want to leave. I kind of got into a very serious mode and I was like, I need to evacuate and I need to pack up important stuff because this is not going to be good. Their Santa Ana winds were blowing like crazy and I just knew it wasn't right. So I called up my basically second family um, and I asked them, I was like, can I come over and sleep over because <laughs> I don't feel safe where I am because the winds can take those embers anywhere even if it wasn't Thousand Oaks, like, I was not safe where I was, so I honestly kind of packed up just to stay the night, so I didn't even take important papers or not even, like, I couldn't even call my mom because she was in Indonesia sleeping, so I don't know what she needed to save. My mind also kind of went in a blurry, like, I don't need any of this stuff. All I need is to be safe. I really don't need any of this stuff. I grabbed the most random stuff. I grabbed, like, my knitting needles and my laptop and then left. But it really does put things into perspective that material things mean nothing. Your safety and my friend's safety was everything to me that day and that's all I cared about. So I went to my family friend's house in Calabasas. I was with an adult now at this time, so she was like, okay, we're gonna evacuate. We were under a voluntary evacuation, so we were like, there's no way we're sleeping with the chance that there could be a fire erupting behind our door. So we were like, okay, let's just... We had another family friend in Sherman Oaks, so we thought, might as well just have a good night's rest and go there. Little did we know we'd be there for the next five days, but we packed up the car, 
packed up their animals. I went to bed that night and all my friends were getting evacuated at 3 a.m., 4 a.m. So I was actually grateful that I went early, but I just can't even imagine if I decided to stay here alone and I get a police knocking on my door to mandatory evacuate, I think I would die. <laughs> so I woke up the next morning, this is Friday morning now, and it told me that the fire had crossed the 101, which we were like, it's not gonna cross the 101. Little did we know it would go to Malibu. And basically my whole entire hillside of where I grew up, Liberty Canyon, was on fire, went on the news in the morning, and it was just unreal to see my town, like my bubble, on the news. I stayed evacuated for five days. My sister came home, my mom came home, and we just got back to our apartment yesterday. We were just allowed in yesterday, um, but the damage and destruction that this fire has caused is unlike any other I've ever seen in this town. The amount of structures and homes lost, I can't even imagine. I'm so lucky to have a home to go to and so many people have nothing. It breaks my heart, it really does. Not having a home, losing everything you've ever had. Not only is the fire affecting ordinary people around here, but also celebrities are losing their homes. Miley Cyrus's home burnt down really well-known people's houses are gone. So everyone's kind of in the same boat. And if the fire has brought any good, it's that we're all coming together as a community and I've never seen such teamwork and gratitude in this town, which is really nice, especially since it's a town of such wealth and such luxury. I've never seen so many people come together. It's really amazing and I just kind of wanted to break it down. I know you guys have seen a lot of insta stories on ways you can help. But my description box is going to be the ultimate everything, how you can help, links, how you can help if you have no money, um, and all that good stuff. So I have school canceled till the end of Thanksgiving break because there were there was a building in my school that burnt down and nothing is safe. It's just insane to me that my biggest issue last week was that I had a test in school that I didn't want to take and now I don't go to school. It really puts things into perspective how small my problems are. I'm just really happy that my friends are safe. So the name of the fire is the Woolsey Fire. It burnt. I'll put the statistics here because I know I'm gonna get it wrong and I know it's constantly updating but you need to evacuate. Firefighters are risking everything for your life and you staying at your house is not going to save it. I know for many cases that is true for people fighting with hoses on their roof and stuff, but for me at least in my apartment, there was no way I was gonna save it alone. Your life is truly more important than your belongings and you need to help out the firefighters by evacuating and leaving space and leaving roads open for that, for them to go through. So how you can help. If you have the means to, um, there are GoFundMe links that you can donate. As little as a dollar helps, honestly. There are so many people that are helping out right now and that have the connections to help out. So if you can't personally, you live somewhere else, if you donate to these GoFundMe's, it all goes straight to, it all goes straight to the people out there that are helping the community rebuild. Um, and our next issue kind of is that we're gonna have rains and now that we have no brush to catch the rain, mudslides are gonna be a big issue. So we're trying to prevent that. There's a prevention GoFundMe for that. Also, firefighters are everything, you guys. I've never seen such bravery and such selflessness as I have with these firefighters. I just want to hug each and every one of them and invite everyone for Thanksgiving. <laughs> but they are having all these different fundraisers. A lot of places are donating proceeds to the fire, to fire victims, and they're just, there's a lot of things that you can do if you have the means to that are greatly appreciated and, and that will help this whole community to rebuild and recover from this disaster. If you do not have the means to donate money, there's still so many things that you can do. Just reposting all those stories, everything that I link below will help bring awareness to everything. Just raising $5 is a lot and 
even if you can't personally there are someone out there that will see that and will donate so repost everything um if you live in the area there's a lot of clothing donation drops food donation drops um where you can help out with people that have lost their homes if you know someone personally that has lost their homes i'm sure that there are some clothes in your closet that are not in need anymore and I'm looking to set up some type of fundraiser that we can do together me and you where proceeds will go to fire victims I'm still trying to figure that out but if I figure that out soon it'll be on my Instagram so follow my Instagram to see I'm probably going to do some type of clothing sale or something where proceeds go to fire victims but Yes to everyone that was asking. I'm safe. I'm totally okay. I was very very lucky to have a home to come home to They still are unsure of the cause of this. It is speculated that it was some type of machinery malfunction It could have been arson the most devastating and disgusting thing to me right now is that there's looters out there that are going to homes because they know no one's in them and taking stuff people that are going to burnt down homes just to find stuff in it it's disgusting i can't believe that there are people out there that even think about doing that in such a vulnerable time i can't believe there's people like that in this world um that is everything i kind of have to say about the whole disaster that's going on in my area um the most important thing to me is that everyone is safe and um we're gonna rebuild and we're going to recover from this and we're gonna come out stronger and I know that for a fact but please check out the links below um, I'm sure you're gonna find some sort of helpful information down there share it repost it um, whatever you can really to help out is amazing um, I want to go to school in two weeks and I want everything to be back to normal and I know that that will happen with your help and with everyone's help and I just want everything to go back to normal so if you live in this community I'm here with you I'm going through the same thing you are if you have lost your home please DM me contact me I want to help I really really do I, if I can give you anything I will give you everything I need nothing and all material stuff at this point and I just want everyone to know that I'm here to help if I can do anything if you know something that I didn't tag below please please contact me on my Instagram DM me I see most of my stuff on there um, and I love you all so much I want all of you guys to stay safe um, this has really taught me that your life is more important than anything ever so I love you all so much and I'll see you next week when hopefully everything's back to normal and I can do a normal video. I'll see you next week. Bye.